Uh, Professor Dan, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, first of all, your thoughts on the ceasefire, and then we'll talk about your own personal experience. Yes, yeah, so I agree with you, George, that the short ceasefire is necessary. It's important. It's a beginning step, but of course it's not sufficient. We need a permanent ceasefire. We need this war to end. We need the carnage to end. And as you said, the U.S. is even afraid of the short ceasefire because it's afraid that more journalists will get in and see exactly what terror uh, the Israelis have, have uh, brought upon the people of Gaza. But certainly it's a good step, uh, a positive step, and I hope it's the beginning of something. And it wasn't a U.S.-brokered uh, uh, ceasefire. It wasn't uh, a British or French-brokered ceasefire. Uh, it was brokered by Qatar and by Egypt. That, too, is telling, isn't it? Absolutely, and this is very typical, right? I mean, look, the U.S. is no longer in the business of diplomacy, of trying to broker peace. We know in the case of Ukraine, for example, that a peace deal was in the offing in March or April of last year, which could have saved hundreds of thousands of lives, and that the U.S. and the U.K. intervened to prevent that deal from being uh, honored. And in the situation with uh, Palestine now, the U.S. is playing a treacherous role, afraid, as you say, of even a four-day pause. So yes, we must give credit to Egypt uh, and Qatar for, for, this, uh, for this ceasefire. Now, what happened uh, between you and the Egyptian government, uh, with which I have long and uh, sometimes uh, tumultuous dealings myself? I have uh, oftentimes uh, been in the Sinai uh, and uh, trying to get into Gaza or trying to get out of Gaza. Tell us what happened to you and your party. Well, we had a party of about 20 or so people. You mentioned Max Lumenthal was there. So was Chris Hedges, um, Margaret Kimberly, and another number of other journalists and activists. And uh, we wanted to accompany Egyptian um, activists to the Rafah crossing to help bring humanitarian aid. We did so at the request and the invitation of these um, Egyptians. It seemed that we had gotten permission to do that. And then it, it, right at the last second, which happened to be 5.30 in the morning on a Saturday, I'm sorry, on a Sunday, uh, we were denied that permission. So then we decided the uh, next day on a Monday to try to hold a press conference in front of the U.S. Embassy to, one, call for the opening of the Rafa crossing, which has largely been closed to people and to humanitarian aid, and to call, of course, for the U.S. to end its support for the slaughter in Gaza. We were there for, for probably 15, 20 minutes or so, and um, at some point, the Egyptian authorities who continued to come towards us, ask us questions, expressed concern that some of us had kafiyas on, some people had Palestinian flags that seemed to upset them the most. At some point, they just came, surrounded us, arrested us, and uh, brought us to police headquarters where we were questioned and processed and let go after a few hours. Um, it was a very interesting um, experience in that it began very, very hostile with them throwing us, literally throwing us into paddy wagons and, and bringing us to police headquarters. By the end, it was more friendly and they actually saw the statement that we had written that they want, we wanted to give to the embassy that said what I said, told you, that opposed the genocide in Gaza, called for the opening of Rafa. And as you said, or you, there are many in Egypt, even amongst the authorities who support those sentiments, and the commandant of the headquarters told us that, told us he supported our statement and uh, ended up saying we were welcome in Egypt any time. So I saw that as a little bit of a, a victory there, George. It is a victory. Uh, in, the, in the dog days of President Mubarak, I was handed uh, a slip of paper declaring me persona non grata uh, at the Cairo airport and the uh, official, I can still see him in my eyes now, said you will never again be allowed back in Egypt. Uh, not two months later, uh, Mubarak had been overthrown and I was 
indeed back in Egypt, and as I came down the aircraft steps, I found a brass band on a red carpet uh, playing uh, uh, a welcome note uh, to me uh, for my arrival. So if you didn't get that slip of paper, uh, then you should definitely try to go back uh, to Egypt, Dan, because there are millions, tens of millions of outstanding people in Egypt, the most important, the greatest of all Arab countries. But it is trapped in this schizophrenia, isn't it? It's terrified of Israel. It's terrified of the United States. It wants to bring about ceasefires, and it is humiliated by not being allowed to open its own gate on its own territory in Rafah uh, because Israel will attack it if it does. Uh, this schizophrenia is not good for your health, is it? No, and this is part of the schizophrenia, frankly, that plagues the entire Arab world, right? Um, the Arab world has largely been silent about what's been happening in Palestine for quite some time. And it's for the reasons you say. It's out of fear. It's out of greed. Uh, we know that right now even the Egyptians are being bribed to consent, to collaborate with Israel in its ethnic cleansing plan to send all the people of Gaza into the Sinai Desert, and so far Egypt has resisted that to their credit. And as is the usual case, the Palestinian people are leading liberation in the region, leading liberation movements in the world. And I think you will see liberation movements come to power in these various countries because of the inspiration of the Palestinian people. And that is why, by the way, George, the Egyptian government fears these demonstrations, these pro-Palestinian demonstrations in Egypt. By the way, they broke one up while we were there, uh, a big uh, demonstration that was planned for Torrier Square that they broke up, because they know that the Palestinian, the call for Palestinian liberation is one that could lead to the fall of their own regime. And all the governments in the Arab world know the same. Well, the President Arafat often used to say to me that uh, the Palestinians were the 300 Spartans uh, holding the pass at Thermopylae, waiting for the city-states to rise up. That was one of his favorite uh, metaphors. Uh, the, the Arab governments uh, have moved, let's be fair to them. President Sisi has moved and the ceasefire is partly a result of that. Uh, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia has moved. Uh, Kuwait has been outstanding. Uh, and then, of course, there are many Arab countries, Yemen, uh, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, that are part of the resistance axis. So the, the lacunae of, uh, uh, of the open, outright collaborators is actually much smaller than it's ever been, Dan. I think that's a fair statement. And I think a lot of that is because of the pressure of the people in those countries who have taken to the streets and demanded support for the Palestinian people, which has been very inspiring. And of course, we're seeing the very same demonstrations happen in your great town of London and in many of the cities in my country. And um, I hope that we will see change, political change in all of our countries because of this. And again, I think that that you know, Arafat was right, that they are the Spartans fighting the fight that we all need to fight right now. The, uh, the United States uh, government is uh, crashing and burning. Uh, the opinion poll ratings of President Biden are uh, a record low, and they were already low before that. And the young voters in particular are citing his foreign policy as one of the major reasons why they could not possibly vote for him. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, this is a sea change, George. This is an amazing occurrence. I saw one poll that said 80% of Democrats opposed Biden's policies in Palestine. A majority of uh, Americans oppose Biden's policies in Ukraine now. 
the American people are waking up. And as you say, it shows that it, it appears that Generation Z, the generation between the age of 18 and 34, they are the most enlightened. I think largely because they're the least uh, uh, influenced and persuaded by the mainstream media. They're getting their news from social media, from platforms like X and TikTok. And that's where we're seeing the carnage in Gaza. We're not seeing uh, on the nightly news. And so they're not fooled. This is an amazing um, uh, occurrence. This is something we all should be heartened by, and I certainly am. And I think political change is coming. I think the Democratic Party is over at this point. Biden cannot win this election, and he can't win because he has supported this genocide in Palestine. I've always loved the letter Z or Z, as we call it, ever since I used to follow Zorro as a kid. Uh, lastly, as an American, Dan, uh, 60 years on uh, from the murder of President uh, Kennedy, I don't know if the anniversary is being much marked in your country, but uh, is there anybody left that believes uh, that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald killed Jack Kennedy all on his own some? Or is it now settled, uh, the settled will of the American people, that there was much more to it than that? I think it is the settled will of the American people that he was killed by his own government in a coup. Again, the media would deny that, but the American people are very clear on that. And we have a lot of good people to thank for that. One is, is my friend Oliver Stone in his movie JFK, which I think really um, uh, brought the floodgates open uh, on this subject. And also Cyril Wecht. I, I live in Pittsburgh, as you know, George, and Cyril Wecht, the great coroner, who's been very involved in telling the true tale of the assassination of JFK is from Pittsburgh. And there's actually a weekend long um, symposium just that just ended on the JFK assassination. I think the American people know that their government, maybe that John F. Kennedy was the last true democratically elected president we ever had, that democracy died in November of 1963. I hope it'll be brought back, but I think, uh, I think that's the truth and I think Americans know that.